Hello guys, welcome to my overview of Galactic Civilizations 3. My name is Kieran. So, I've uh, put about 35 hours into this game so far. And keep in mind, this entire video is based off of what is included in Beta 1. Um, Beta 1's been out for, who was it, about three weeks now? I'm not sure, two and a half, three weeks. Uh, so there's a lot missing from the game, but I like to give people kind of an overview of what is there. So, first off, Galactic Civilizations 3 is a turn-based 4x strategy game. Um, you know, I don't exactly know what the market is, but pretty much you're building an empire. And you're going to go out and you're going to conquer your enemies eventually in different ways. There's different victory types. So, um, you can draw a lot of similarities to games like Civilization, uh, Endless Space, uh, really any of those big 4x strategy games. And uh, so, first off, this is our galaxy here. So, as you can see, um, your empire is primarily based out of planets. Now, not all planets are habitable. Um, I'm playing an alien race tonight right now. If I was playing humans, this would be Earth, and you would have Mars, I think, as your, your colonizable planet. Um, so you have different uh, features around the galaxy, you'll see. So colonizable planets of different types, uh, with more to come in future betas. Uncolonizable planets, obviously suns for each star system. If you see over here, each of these dots, these are all suns, okay? And they all have little solar systems around them. Some of them have these asteroids. Uh, other things you'd run into, here is a black hole. I'm currently mining some antimatter. You have one of these nebula clouds has not come there yet. Nebula clouds, along with such as more um, resources, asteroid belts, nebula, and dust clouds. So um, these affect combat if you were to fight in them. Um, haven't had a lot of chance to play with those because once again, a lot of things aren't in beta. But that is not to say this is not a very fun game. I would not have put 35 hours in a game if it was late, believe me. I have no problem buying something on Steam and just not playing it. So, uh, that's that's kind of the default. That's what it looks like. Um, so let's first off uh, look into planets here. So, let's click here. We'll stop. So that's what the solar system looks like. The solar system, the galaxy, sorry. Uh, and you can zoom out a lot like this. Anyways, so whereas in, we'll say something like civilization, these hexes would be land or mountains or whatnot. It's everything is built into the planet. So we'll cover that next. Look here. This is how many turns in uh, over 300 turns into a game. Very long. Seven hours into a game. So every planet has little tiles like this, right? So. You can see how these all developed right now. One interesting thing about this game is in something like, we'll say, Endless Space or Civilization, because those are the two big strategy games I'm most familiar with, so I'm going to draw a lot of comparisons to those. You're just going to be building buildings. So you'll build maybe a barracks, and that will increase your troops, or a starport, and that will increase your starships, you know, their strength, or perks, or whatnot, right? Um, you build something to increase food production, all that. Now, Galactic Civilizations does have some of their buildings. So if we scroll over here, a basic factory, if you see, um, it has its cost right there, but it so it boosts manufacturing by 10%. So this number, the raw manufacturing, um, or raw research, is at the very bottom, and that raw research is 5.4. Or to build a research laboratory, it's going to boost that by 10%. So... Um, that's not that abnormal, right? Uh, the thing that's pretty unique and actually really intriguing with the Empire building for me that keeps me, it's kept me more interested uh, in the Empire building aspect than some of the games is adjacency bonuses. So, as you can see, this is my home world right here. Yep. Uh, I can't call this over here right now. Uh, I have actually fully terraformed this planet, so that means that there were two tiles that beginning with I didn't have. I think it was actually this tile and that tile, if I want to say. I, I believe those are the two. I can't remember. It doesn't matter a ton for this video, but point being, you only start out with so many tiles, and the better a planet is, the more potential tiles you have to build on. If you look at the second planet in my beginning solar system, you see it has five tiles? I think it started with four. So, <laughs> 
it really does limit what you can do with planets. Now with adjacency bonuses, we'll just show this here for now. So if you notice, uh, the tooltip here has popped up. Down below the stats, there's a thing that says level 4. Um, that is basically bonuses it's getting from adjacency uh, to other similar buildings. And if you see, it has a 4 on it, right? So it's pretty useful. Now for placing this, this is a power plant as opposed to just a factory. This is a manufacturing center. It's an upgraded factory. Uh, below manufacturing, the very bottom thing, it says bonus to adjacent improvements, so that gives plus three levels to manufacturing to everything around it, and that's represented by the plus three. It's really nice, just decent read, right? So basically, that equates to, if you look at this factory here, by default, since it's a better factory, instead of 10, it gives you 25% manufacturing boost. Great already, right? But it is level four. That's based off of its adjacency to other factories, but in this case, which is solely the power plant, boosted four levels, so you see right down towards the bottom it says total manufacturing is 20%. So because it's adjacent, it's not just getting the 25% bonus, it's actually holding at a 45% bonus to my raw manufacturing. So that's cool. That's really cool. And that uh, creates a lot of strategy with your, with the Empire building aspect of it, which is unique to games I have played. Uh, it might be out there. I'm not saying they invented this, but it, it really does entice the player, I feel, uh, to focus on Empire Management. I feel a lot of games, uh, in games with something like Civilization especially, I have a hard time caring about my cities beyond, are you making me money and how soon do I get that tank out, right? As here, you really have to plan ahead because if I were to tear this down, um, I mean a basic factory, now this isn't a good representation, but on, on a good world, a basic factory might take 10 total turns to build, and then you're looking at 8 to 10 turns to upgrade it, this is a tier three or four building, I don't remember. So you're potentially looking at 30 turns of manufacturing to get this. So that's that's pretty cool. We'll go back here real quick uh, to the capital world for a few things. So uh, another great thing it has, which I just love. Um, I actually wish Civilization and some of the games had implemented things like this. So you have this little slider here. So right now I'm split. Third manufacturing on third, well, money and a third research, right? So your raw, we'll call it production, I think that's what they call it, is actually based off of your population. Um, so right here, I'm producing, you'll watch these numbers down at the bottom of the screen. If I want to go full research, bam, I like triple my research, but then all of a sudden my maintenance isn't being covered. So I'm like, all right, let's go over here. So you can really uh, jimmy with this, you know, move it around wherever you want. You need to crank a spaceship out. I mean, 89 production, that's, that's huge but it's also pretty good uh, right there. So that's a really cool slider. In addition to that though, this is civilian, this is military focus. So as you, uh, if you watch to the right, the turns for factories, research labs and whatnot, you slide that to the side, it's gonna say, and hey, it's not, can't do it. I focus 100% on military manufacturing. Now, uh, I'm not sure if they will change this, but there are some things like a military academy, which doesn't count. Basically, this means I'm 100% focused on shipbuilding. So that's going to affect how quick my ships are produced on the starboard. So not only can you control this, but you can control this. So you can really, you can really mess that around if you need to. Um, you know, maybe you want to keep them, all your cities balanced or whatnot. So that's one, uh, one uh, way to play. But also, let's come down here. Where is it? I think it's this planet. Nope, not that planet. That planet's gross looking. Go for a lag here. All right, here we go. So this is just a purely money-making planet. <laughs> Excuse me, I have two factories here. Just so when these have better tech, I can improve these pretty quick. But you know, 84 money. That's that's a lot of wealth to turn. If I were to go balanced, I mean, I'm getting around a third, a little bit more than a third, right? It's not quite 90. That wasn't quite. 30, but anyways, you know, so once again, the adjacency bonus, is, this is equivalent of a factory, so you did just the same thing for wealth, for making money, and there's some of the things for research, and coordination centers, and research laboratories, which, uh, of course, as far as the game, uh, upgrade a lot. So that, that's pretty much how the Empire building works, and it might seem really basic, but you have to balance your population, 
because that's you know your default stats for how much you can produce and then you, you know you go from there so there's a lot of I'm not gonna say customization that's not the right word but there's, there's a lot of layers to this strategy there so that has been a lot of fun um, and then on top of that one more thing I'll mention uh, these just give you a further boost so if, if you want uh, actually this since this is a financial world I should be doing economic stimulus which should give me just a little bit more money so that is how the planets work and just to add to that um, starports are kind of an extension of the planets so you're sponsored by them so right now I have two it's within range of two worlds so starports work that way you're not actually directly producing ships off of these planets but the add production and so the further I slide that slider I, I showed you the military slider here so it's the civilians military if this was hundred percent I'd be building a ship uh, significantly faster uh, it would knock a few turns off of a huge ship like this so that is uh, basically how that works so now let's uh, spin into let's say starports and some other things alright so starports once again this is pretty far into the game but Starports, you construct little spaceships called constructors. You construct constructors, right? Uh, and from there, you go and you upgrade your star bases. So, as you can see here, I have one available upgrade essentially. So I have a constructor that came here, dropped off a construction module, and I haven't upgraded yet. So, these are boosts to planets. So, this is his radius right now, okay? Um, Primarily, you're going to use them to boost your world. So I have production bonus. So that's your just default raw number before all those multipliers add in. Uh, and then these are things where like boosts wealth, boosts manufacturing. So you know, 25% doesn't add a ton. Maybe when you're looking at like 200% with a world with a lot of factories, but it is really something. Um, you know, 25% is 25%. And the fact of the matter is, you just build a ship takes a few turns to build and you get all your worlds a bonus so so that's pretty great um, you see you can build laboratories so it's just like worlds you can focus on wealth manufacturing research uh, there's also things to increase perimeter scans uh, star based defense I haven't figured out how that's really implemented I've had some enemy fleets attack I think they're supposed to have kind of like a defense radius if that makes sense <laughs> Uh, but a lot of combat isn't quite implemented, which is fine. It is beta 1. The game isn't expected to come out for like 8 months or so. I think like end of quarter 1 of 2015. So considering this game has enticed me a lot more than other games, uh, I think I think it's going to be fine. Uh, the other main things Star Bases can do, there's, there's two actually I'll mention. Uh, one is mining. So this Star Base has a mining ring, and I can upgrade that to gain more resources. But for right now, I get one antimatter. And I'm using that on a factory, uh, or not a factory, a power plant. I have an antimatter power plant, I believe, on one of my worlds. Uh, so I would have to upgrade this to basically gather more antimatter if I wanted to build a second factory. So right now I'm just getting one. So they have a few resources. They're not really uh, utilized a lot right now, but I think in beta two they're going to be utilized a ton. So you think of it as strategic resources and, and whatnot. Uh, and the third thing star bases can do. Um, is increase your range of your ships. Now I'll cover that more a little bit later and I don't actually have a star base I'm doing that with. I've been lucky with star placement this game. Uh, all I'll say for now is your ships can't fly forever. They're, they're limited with their range based on life support and other factors. So star bases you can plop them on the edge of your empire for to put one there. It would basically connect this. So if I had a ship with really poor range uh, that would no longer be a problem. So that essentially completes uh, Empire Management for now. I don't think I, there's anything I've left out. Um, they have a really basic screen here, give you an economic breakdown, governors, trade, all this stuff isn't quite implemented yet. All of it will just make the game deeper, and, and honestly, the governors especially will make it easier for players to manage. As you can see, there's lots of planets here, and I feel like that's always kind of a teetersome part of, of these big strategy games is when you have a large empire how to manage it and and not have that be the only thing you do I know a lot of people get into the empire managing aspect of it but 
you know the game has other factors there's other things you do besides just manage worlds and I think that's there's, a, there's that for a reason right uh, if you just really wanted a really good manager simulation they could do that but they, they want more than that so that is pretty much everything there is a really light brief discussion on what there is to build lots of different options here I'll just come back to the world real quick I mean these are all things I haven't built I haven't built excuse me uh, things to increase my ships, but their size, or their range. These are all things to improve. improve food, research. Um, you can dedicate a world if you really want these huge bonuses. Uh, there's things that add to influence, which is your your control and whatnot. Yeah, but that's that's pretty much how empire management works. And beyond that, it's very similar to other strategy games you've played. You know, things take so many turns to build. Uh, you can you know, queue things up, obviously. I don't think it's really invent reinventing the wheel, but it doesn't need to, right? Uh, with what it does already, especially with the hex system, that is that and the implementation of the adjustment production, or adjustment planning production tab, I'll call that. Yeah, that's what I deemed it. Uh, that adds enough difference to me to take it even beyond what a lot of other strategy games that I, I love. I honestly love it. You know, Civilization and the Space, those are great games, but it takes it a step further. And this is another thing that uh, Galactic Civilization says to add. So that that's that for Empire Management. Now uh, we can move on to some of these other tabs up here. Alright guys, so now that we've covered the basics of the Empire, let me cover some of these tabs. So, right now Victory says coming soon. You can't actually win in the beta, but it's pretty much just wipe out these planets. Uh, eventually there will be other victory options. Um, but for now, it's just your old, good old supremacy or whatever you want to call it. The tech tree is pretty cool. Um, for a few reasons. One, there's actually four different tech trees and as you see, I was engineering. They're pretty expensive, each of them. Each of them are a little different. So, colonization, these are your main um, production, Food, growth, research, uh, planet improvements like terraforming things, engineering, you have all kinds of ways to improve your ships, speed, range, size of ships, warfare, three types of weapons, three types of defenses to coincide with those weapons, um, amongst other things, and it influences things like diplomacy, uh, expanding your empire's reach, uh, things like that. Um, one thing that's kind of unique that, well, I don't remember seeing in other games, once again, disclaimer, it might be in other games, is the specialization branches. So, right here, oh, right here, um, you see, there just looks like single text, right? But you can do these circular ones. There's actually a lot of specialization you can do. So right here, you research your, like, you know, first upgrade, tier two factors, right? Now under specialization for manufacturing, you can either increase your total manufacturing by 10%, increase your research by 10%, or decrease manufacturing cost of everything by 10%. That's pretty cool, right? Look at something like engineering. You can increase your movement, uh, range your ships can see, or the range that they can fly. So not only do you get like a simple tech. <coughs> Sorry. Excuse me. But, so you have to research one of these, but you can really specialize, and especially with weapons, for example. Um, you want to do missile optimization, you can shoot faster, they cost less, so less manufacturing you need, um, less production to complete the ship that has that type of missiles on it, or just the ships take up less size, because ships can only fit so much on them. So, that that's a really cool thing. Um, I, I, I like it. A lot of times... I, I feel like tech trees are, you research X, you get Y and Z, right? But in this, you research X, but you can also, there's a variance of X. And you can research all three of these if you want. It's not just you choose one or are locked in. If you really wanted, you can make beam weapons really, really effective. Decrease what they cost to make, what they cost to fit on ships, all that stuff. So that's neat within the tech tree. There's little stop areas where you you can spend some extra turns or go back later on when it's easier to get that tech. 
the second thing that's kind of interesting, let me come back to the screen. So, uh, you notice there's the Age of Expansion, Age of War, and the Age of Ascension. Now, right now, you see I have Age of Ascension partially filled up, right? Now, if this is the beginning of the game, let's say I only had Age of Expansion right here, I would be limited to what I could research by this line right here. These are the texts that you can research in the Age of Expansion. This is Age of War, this is Age of Ascension, excuse me. See, with engineering, there's the first line and the second line. So, when I first realized that, I thought, wow, that's super dumb, like, I just want to be able to get text, but in all reality, you kind of already, you want to research these technologies. Now, this could just be because the game hasn't allowed me to play the way I want, but let's say I beeline to Planetary Invasion, one, that would be really lame. That would be the strategy everyone would have to do with the military, maybe. So it limits it to so many turns. Not really, it's not a turn limit, but it's a certain point in the game where you can have enough technologies to unlock the Age of War, right? Um, but honestly, you know, I look, you have two, this is a better example. There are two texts to increase planet tile yield. So with these two texts, I can place two new tiles on planets if the land is sufficient to improve through terraforming and whatnot, all right? And you might think, oh, I just really want to max my planets out at the beginning, and, and maybe, maybe you would want to, right? But I have never really felt like I hit this, and I'm like, oh, dang, I really want that next tech, you know? Research centers are a great example. You could, you could get here, um, you could research the focuses and the better research facilities, but honestly, these things cost so much that unless you have researched at least in xenoeconomics, you're going to be bankrupt. So it's just the way the game's built. It paces itself, and it allows for you to, I'm, I'm going to say, enjoy the beginning parts of the game in, in a way that's different than others. Now, you are clicking next turn quite a lot. Um, at the beginning of any game, right? Any of these strategy games, you're just trying to wait till you get a few more factories, you're trying to actually produce things and whatnot. But this um, limits me, so I'm not so overly focused on, oh, I gotta kill that barbarian camp, beeline to catapults and invade that first city. Like, like I, I play that way in Civilization if I'm going militaristically, right? This paces the game, and it actually, I have enjoyed it so much more than I thought it would. Now, that might not be your experience. Maybe, oh, why did I click on that? I'm talking about technology, sorry. Maybe, you're like, man, I just really want to max out my weapons. But, you know, I would suggest that you really want a depth and breadth of your empire. And this, I hesitate to use the word force, because I, I think when, I, well, I know when I hear the word term force about a game, and I think that's similar with other gamers, it has a negative connotation with it, right? But in this case, it's it's not. It paces the game, as I've said many times already, and it forces you to fill out your empire, kind of make it more rounded, and once you hit the Age of War, you do start specializing more, which is really cool. Um, it doesn't feel like you're being held back after the Age of War, because honestly, if you look through here, so I've got two texts three, four, like four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we're looking at like 10, 11 texts or so. At least there's probably a few more. I was just really quick counting. So you know, around like maybe 14, 15 texts, and you go from Age of War to Age of Ascension. So the, the weight from the beginning of the game to entering the Age of War is a lot shorter than the wait between the Age of War beginning and the Age of Ascension, when you can essentially unlock that, I guess we'll say, we'll use that word. So that's neat. Then you really, f then it really feels like you're specializing, right? Am I focusing on technology, or in my case, I'm, I'm just fine with the technology I have. I have enough worlds, but I'm just focusing on production here. And that's actually all that I've done with colonization. Uh, for engineering, I've really increased the range of my ships. I'll come, I'll talk about that later, but I have a lot bigger ships. They can fly a lot further and a bit faster. But, I, there are some things I just haven't focused on. Um, and then with warfare, really, I've only specialized into missile launchers. Um, I haven't even specialized in the defense. 
So I, I hope you're starting to get kind of a, a vision of what's going on. I have the default thing that allows me to put the basic um, counters for either beam, missile, or kinetic weapons. You could research these a ton more, but I haven't. Um, influence, I have a bit into the economy just because my empire is so far flung that I felt the need to well not go bankrupt I guess so yeah after you hit age of war you really do need to choose your strategy and specialize because as you can see there are so many empty techs anything that doesn't have a solid color that's an empty tech so that's that's pretty much how technology works and that is again something that I haven't really seen technology being limited I mean I'm thinking of like once again in the space or uh, civilization there are things that you know, the tech chain the tech tree is linked right but it's not like a hard limit if you really wanted you could just research the bottom tech the entire game on civilization it would take you forever and you would lose but like that's an option as opposed to here it, it's a little bit different um I think that's really it for technology uh, I really can't think of anything else uh besides I don't think I mentioned this before, but certain planets have bonuses, so, <laughs> excuse me, getting over something here. Uh, this manufacturing bonus, but a decrease for research, so I guess that's, like that. I probably should mention that Empire Specialization, didn't really think of that, I'll um, we'll throw that little tidbit in there for fun. So let's move on to ideology now. Alright, so ideology is kind of interesting. Uh, the best thing I have to compare it to is social policies in the civilization games. Now, unlike social policies, you don't generate ideology every turn. While there might be some, uh, maybe buildings that will do that in the future, right now that's not the deal. So, you earn these through various, I mean, gives you options when you colonize planets, for example, right now. And a lot of times you can choose to either embrace or destroy the we'll say inferior, less developed species, you know, that's, that's there on the planet. So, you get points as you go. So, some of these are really cool. Soldiering, that's basically your ability to invade planets. Get down here, there's some really cool ones. Uh, each planet receives additional use of the land, so that's basically free um, terraforming. You get an overlordship, I don't know what that is. It's, I assume it's super big. Overlord typically implies that, right? Uh, that's disabled the beta. Let's see the beta. So some things are disabled the beta. This one increases your tourism in all worlds. That's a good economic boost. Um, so these are all kind of geared towards what we're calling them. But there's the benevolent, pragmatic, and malevolent, malevolent tree. And interestingly enough, you, you can spread between trees, but it costs more. So since I have one, I have the first tech, not tech ideology here. And the first technology ideology. I keep calling it technology ideology in this tree, the cost goes up a little bit. Um, so that keeps you from just completely branching out into everything else, forcing you to specialize in your but giving you the option. Um, I'm pretty far in this game, and it's like a second to the largest map I think you can play in the beta so far. As you can see, I have hardly any of these unlocked. So eventually this is one of those things that are going to lock. A lot of choices, different events will be occurring that let you gain uh, points in the ideology trees. For right now, you just, it's all based off colonizing events, and I mean, everything's colonized pretty quickly, so there's not much you can really do to gain them beyond that. But uh, a lot of them are disabled. There are things that aren't in there right now, so it's, you're not missing them a ton, but you know, it's free research points and point of view. Uh, approval bonuses, free colony ship, there's three free constructor vessels. I mean, these are these are one-time things, a lot of them. Some of them are more than one time, but they try to make them not overpowering, but just add to the specialization, I think, is what the, um, the, the designers really want from it. So that's ideology. More on that in the future. I like what I've seen so far. It's, it's a neat idea. Hope you further specialize your race. So... We'll skip over diplomacy because, well, it's not the game. <laughs> there's no united planets. There's no treaties. You're constantly at war with everyone. You 
start each game with war, at war and who's going to make peace. So, diplomacy, not implemented yet, but that's okay. So, now we'll go into the ship designer. Alright, here is the ship designer. So, you can take a default ship and build upon it, or you can make a new design. Now, real quick, let me show you the ship I made the other day. The first ship that was actually like that is a cool ship. I made this ship. She's a beauty, isn't she? She's it's pretty cool. So this is a massive size ship. There's essentially tiny, small, medium, large, huge. I think the term maybe not massive. So anyways, pretty cool ship, right? Now, your next question probably is, how does one build such a ship? So we're gonna do a new design. Do a tiny, tiny small, medium, large. I guess there's cargo too. So the different ship sizes. So we're just gonna go with the small. Pop that right here. So there's two aspects to the design. And one is obviously what the ship looks like. Two is the actual equipment. Which this is influenced by your technology. We'll cover the design aspect first because it's a far more interesting ship. Uh, far more interesting ship. Far more interesting part. Excuse me. So I can pick a huge part if I want doesn't matter. I can adjust the scale to make it work. So let's just, um, I'm just going to mess around here for a little bit. If you are bored at any time, skip ahead to, well, whatever I tell, wherever I tell you to skip ahead in the uh, video once I was edited. So I will be sharing pro tips along the way. So, alright, this is just a few things I figured out. So one, you have this really cool right there so I just built that right over the cubes the cubes covered up I know some people probably well, I know I was a little worried at first like oh gosh I don't want that stupid cube in the way right so the second one so first pro tip I'm going to share for the day when I first started doing this I was like well there's all these stupid hard points right how do you ever get a ship to do what you want well turns out besides scale there's also an option to rotate, which is cool. I think it's really small right now. Yeah, it is. So we can rotate it. There's actually an axis showing up earlier that you could, like, visibly drag three different colors, a red, green, and blue. I don't know where those went. I must have turned those off or something. Let me see. Uh, let's go snap, rotation, snap. Ah, there we go. Great, great, great. That's what it is. So these are really cool. So you can just literally increase these. Right now it's proportional. So if I wanted, I could make it really fat. I could make it really long. So yeah. I'll just default it back to proportional. Rotating. Uh, this is what I was talking about. Really useful. Uh, you know, rotate your parts around, right? But line that up. Whatever we leave it. No, we're not gonna leave it. This is a professional. There we go. How are we supposed to win wars if our ships are perfect? Alright. Now offset. This is the cool one. So like I said at first I was like, those there's those snap points, right? How do you get around that? Well, that's all done with this. So there we go. So I just moved it. Well, it did originally snap to that one spot. It's a little different now, right? Um, it's still treated that way. Essentially, it's kind of weird. It's it's hard to explain. Hopefully, you saw it right there, though. So I moved it. I offset it. But it's still treated as being attached to that first hard point, um, snap point, whatever you want to call it. Let me rotate this straight. That's no, we're just going to leave that. We will just delete that, actually. We'll show this feature again. So this guy's placed right on there. Oh, my default one must be off. All right. Well, very easily, you can see you can just start over. Uh, throw a second one right there. Offset you. So yeah, this I did not understand until the other day. And I was like, this ship design, I must be missing something. 
And then I realized that it was missing something, so let's move this back just a little bit more. It's kind of it's okay looking, I guess, right? So that's essentially how you manipulate the parts. There's also animations you can do, uh, which are pretty funky. I haven't really messed around with this too much. You can make some rotate and whatnot. I'm, I'm actually just not going to mess with that in this video. Uh, one interesting thing that you can do is let's say we want to put some wings on this thing. So there we are, always some cool looking wings, right? We're like, oh, these are, these are some sick wings. Sometimes those don't work as well as I want them to. Alright, so I wanted to hide that part of the wing, right? So I get that, and I want to do the same thing on the other side. No, instead of having to line it up and worry about getting straight, you saw me mess with that earlier, right? It can be difficult to get things straight if you get them off just a little bit. Um, I guess you match the numbers up, right? But you can also just do, there's these options for symmetry. So right here, you can just toggle, toggle symmetry and look at the horizontal axis. Boom! Look at that. That's awesome, right? Do double. There we go. Or the other way. Uh, you can just flip the parts. So these are just directly flipping the parts. These. This isn't that. So that's cool. That's pretty cool that you can just easily do that. Um, one thing I will point out. It is kind of annoying. It like creates a double for you there, so you can't have different parts. Um, at least I haven't figured out how to do that yet. See that option is just not on there. Uh, let's mess around with this bunch real quick, see if we can solve this problem. I'm pretty sure I've this already done. Yeah, I'm already done with this. So this is one of those things where I'm just like, well, see, because if you offset it, it, it gets pulled in that so if you have something with symmetry, you're stuck that way. So if you're trying to cut, sh you know, take shortcuts, you might pay for it with ship design options in the future. I don't know. <laughs> Excuse me. So let's throw a cockpit looking thing on this. Go. Once again, we're going to just use the offset. It's our best friend. So that's how you make this, make the magic happen. So there we have an interesting looking ship. Still want something cockpit like. Engine on the back. There we go. So that engine, you know, I like what it looks like. But I don't like the engine actually itself, so. Put it up a little bit more. Straighten that out. Go back to offset. Push that down. Pull it in. Decrease the scale just a little bit. There we go. So we have an engine on the back of our ship. So you can see real quick, I made that ship. Yeah, it looks kind of dumb. I understand that, but it's not too bad. Now, if you want to spend just hours and hours, that's how you can create all these ships. I don't know if they spend hours and hours, but. You could create a lot of cool stuff. Um, so that is basically the basics with ship design. So now I'll move ahead to uh, how ship design is taken into the game and how this actually affects how your ships perform and whatnot. Alright, so to do that, we. <coughs> Excuse me, the darn cop. Alright, so to do that, there's a different part. So you start out with the hyperdrive. Your default engine that all your ships have, right? I, if you notice, it takes 12.8 mass down here at the bottom. Ship, the ship has 60 mass, that's what you can fit on it. So that takes 12.8. It's one move bonus, and it's a tenth of a, we'll call it space gold maintenance every turn, right? This goes, it's actually the same mass, but it moves two. Now this mass goes up by two, but it gives you three, and that's 16 now your form movement. Over here these numbers will be will change depending on what you put on it. So right now it moves five a turn. I'm gonna put this like warp drive on it. This one down there. Boom, nine moves a turn. Now the warp drives you can 
scale just like the other parts. Oops. You can make it huge if you want. You can make it incredibly small so it doesn't show up. I'll do that because with this ship design, you know, it doesn't really matter. And I'm actually just going to hide it in the ship there. So technically it's on the ship, but you can't see it at all. Now, uh, let's come up here. Life support. This is the ship's range. So that's how far it can move outside of basically your, your control range. And I'll show you that on the map here in a minute once I'm done with this. But if you want to decrease the range, once again, this is your default life support. It's just under 5 mass. Control range. This one, set it to 2 mass. Uh, but it gives you 10 range. So more than double the range, less than double the mass. So if you really wanted to maybe make this a scout ship or something, boom, we'll hide that under there again. So now we've got about half of our uh, ship filled up, right? Sensors increase the range your ship sees. So be those hexes you can see. Colony modules are pretty cool looking, right? Uh, just throw that right there. That, like a for uh, that allows you to colonize planets. Construction modules, put these on ships. They are what I referred to earlier. The default unit is called a constructor, but you can make others. Uh, for example, uh, the constructor can fly a bit out of your control range. That's pretty good. Uh, uh, they call it ship range. So you can fly outside of your domain of control a little bit. I made a cheaper constructor that had two modules, but couldn't fly outside of my zone of control. So the advantage to that, I can upgrade existing starports quickly to connect to my empire. So that was actually really cool. I first played through, I figured that out. I'm not trying to like, not that I was like super smart or anything, right? But I could change a ship to meet my needs. If you wanted, you could go crazy but take construction modules. Or you could put a bunch of colony modules. Um, I've never actually tried to put multiple colony modules on a ship. A uh, colony ship, I think the ship probably would still be used up. You could just start your uh, planet with more population. And then transport module, these are what you carry your troops in to invade other worlds. So kind of cool, right? So these are special modules. Um, too. Uh, you can improve these, I assume. If not, you guys would just put more on, actually. I don't know if you can actually make, like, tier 2 of these. I take that back. I think you just put more on your ship, but how it goes. Uh, support, I don't have those yet. Although, from looking at the tech, there's things like stealth, targeting, jamming, really cool things that will add a bit of their strategy to your ships. So, right here, we have weapons now. So, this is our scout. He can fly decent range, really fast. So we're, in addition to a scout, we're going to give him a little bit of firepower. So put a laser right there. Put two cannons on this side. Oops. That cannon. Place it there. Put it right there. There we go. Right there. So see the symmetry there? Of course, we need to put two to actually have two. Um, but in this case, that's pretty cool, right? That looks pretty nifty, actually. So... I have six kinetic attack and two attack. Uh, my missiles are the only thing I've researched. I'm specializing in missiles in this playthrough. So you see here, once again, it's the same as before the life support, really. They have the default mass. It's one weapon and it has four attack. If you go down here, it has more mass, but a lot more attack and more than double attack. Um, so you can place those on your ships, upgrade those. And then these are the plating. These are basically your defense. I put that on there. Actually, have room. But it would give me six armor rating against uh, kinetic, I think. So I get six armor there. Um, so essentially, that would be not uh, like a wash, but it would be pretty good defense, right? Uh, the, the combat isn't really developed. We have a lot of numbers right now. Eventually, when that's implemented, I think in two minutes it promised us like ship speed and tactical speed. Um, range of weapons, rate of fire will affect the factor. Not just if I shoot you with lasers, do you have laser armor? I guess shields, right? Laser armor. Um, or not. But, so you can see, that's how ship design to work. So, really quickly, I have been able to create a decent looking ship. Um, these ships do carry over between plays. Uh, there's a little filter for all the user 
new ships. And you can mark different with obsolete, so if you think you can build a ship better, the programmers have, and if it's a better function or it just looks better, you can do that. Uh, what options do we have? Okay. There we go. So, options there. So, let me save it. You can give it a little thing. We can call this the... Uh, Is the YouTube Scout, <laughs> and if you wanted, you can change this uh, default roles. You can change that. Yeah, but eventually, we'll be able to do that. So that you save it. And if you want, it's on our YouTube Scout. Let's just go to user stuff. YouTube Scout, right there. Right. Uh, I don't know if these are coming up with the user. Oh no, users are the very first one. So this was a dumb ship I made. I don't want to show that to you. Let's get this in my behemoth. So. That's a lot more complicated ship. Center of these. They're actually supposed to be rotating. I don't know why they're not. Uh, but each race has its own individual look to the ships, which is kind of cool. Um, I'll show you this real quick. Since I'm here, so YouTube Scout, notice it's really low attack, no defense. That has 20 whole points. The Behemoth has 150 whole points. A ton of armor. This will damage you. Look laser damage. This or that, it has a huge range. I think that's twice that of the scout ship. It moves just as fast. So, you can do a lot with your ships. If you wanted, you could put ship with just all engines and life support. And I actually have one of the ships I call the Surveyor. Or as I call it, the weird undersea squid thing. That's just what I call it. But this ship has a great range, moves 9, and its sensors are 8. So, you can see basically a 16 tower radius, 15 or 16 tower radius. It's great. Um, this is an example of. Animations you see my little survey thing here is um, twisting. So that's that's a cool thing. So that's ship customization for you guys. They have built-in ships, but you can make your own. Um, and we'll move on to the next thing now. Alright guys, so that's a ship designer. Hopefully you have an idea now of you know how ship design both allows you to customize the look of your empire, but also actually how it functions which is, is really cool, and there'll be a lot more of that as, um, you know, the beta develops. We'll see how what tactics change, and we get a lot better idea how combat works. So, well, with that being said, just a kind of final few words. The beta is, is great. If you like strategy games, if you like turn-based strategy games, um, especially if you like things like Civilization, I'm going to say... Uh, or Endless Space. If you like either of those two, really consider this game. Uh, look at the Let's Plays I've done. There are people out there that have done other Let's Plays I know too. Probably people a little more experienced than me. Uh, but give mine a shot. I appreciate that. Uh, but it's a good game all around. I don't hesitate to say that I have enjoyed this game and I feel like it's, it feels more complete than other games that have been released. That's with the lack of all these governing options, that diplomacy is not in there, that the ideology tree you can't really use. Combat is very, very just basic right now. So basic that even if you go on the forums, a lot of people were, we're still trying to figure out what things mean. When you have a, a ship with three times the health, take on two or three ships smaller in it and it loses, you know, there's things like this that are a little frustrating right now, but that's just because the combat isn't in here. Um, so really the only faults I have for this game are just features that are missing that I'm looking forward to and that's not a fault let me correct myself those are the only downsides to the beta uh, I've like I said I've put around like 30 hours into this game already since it's been out it's been a lot of fun this is my fourth playthrough third or fourth playthrough I think I've played every race a little bit now at least one playthrough the games are feeling a little bit similar now because there is no victory options besides just kill everybody eventually there's gonna be some more uh, like I covered earlier in the video and you know some of, the, some of the things aren't there some of the techs aren't there some of the ships aren't there but that's to be expected with the beta right the game is not gonna come out for eight months so it's great if you like Empire Builders uh, it's great if you like strategy games um, few words of warning let me think uh, so if you really it's it's different than other games I've played so I hope you don't take 
my comparing it to Endless Space or Civilization. Uh, and if those are your favorite games, don't be like, oh, this game is going to be just going to just wet your whistle there. It's just going to feed that appetite you have for strategy games. No, not necessarily. It is different. That being said, it is different and I've enjoyed it as much as those games. You know, honestly, I think I, I enjoy this more than Endless Space. Um, combat, I know, is going to be somewhat Endless Spacey too. Another disclaimer. I know some people really don't like the combat. I was one of them at the beginning. Uh, but the developers said this game is more about the big picture, right? Uh, they don't want you to get bogged down in little XCOM-esque, you know, uh, turn-based combat. That's not what this game's meant to be. That being said, the way you fit your ships is going to affect things. Uh, just because you fit your ships in one way doesn't mean you're... You know, I, what am I saying here? It's not control of combat. They want to improve it a little bit from the second one, which was very endless spacey. Um, so that'd be my only disclaimer. If you completely cannot stand endless space because of the combat, if you're one of those people, I would wait to see more of this game. Um, when I say if you're one of those people, no offense meant. Completely understand because as I say, I still struggle with that sometimes. Uh, but the game has so much to offer that even with combat being as simple as it is right now, I don't think I'm going to very close to any engagements. Yeah, I'm not. It's still an immensely fun game. And this has come from someone who, like, nine times out of ten, probably, when I start a civilization game up, I just start killing everybody. I'm like, I'm taking the world. Uh, so this is coming from a very, like, domination-centric, conquest kind of guy. That's how I play my strategy games a lot. I That's just what I enjoy more than sitting there, waiting for a cultural victory to come after, you know, two hours of clicking the next turn button, I like to say. And I know that's not true. It's not to dig at you cultural victory fans out there, but um, just to put in perspective that even though it isn't like XCOM or um, whatnot, I don't think the combat's going to be lacking, but don't expect it to be completely combat com focused because it is called Galactic Civilization. So I just want you to look at that big picture. So that's the uh, conclusion of my overview of Galactic Civilizations 3 Beta 1. Uh, check back later as they release more betas. I will do more overview videos along with my Let's Plays and uh, whatnot to give you guys an idea of what they're adding, how that's affecting the game as it stands, how I think that affects the big picture of the game, uh, whether it's for, for good or for bad. But overall, I'd say this game's great so far. And uh, if you are just waiting for an excuse to, to get it and try it, let this be your excuse. Um, as long as you got the 45 bucks to spend, I suppose. Uh, don't go robbing no banks for 45 bucks. That'd be stupid anyways to rob a bank for only $45. So, yeah, Galactic Civilizations 3, guys. Check out my YouTube page. Check out my uh, blog for more information on this and other strategy games and, and more. I hope this overview video has been helpful for you. Uh, and we'll see you around the Galactic Footman. Thanks for checking in.